Hello, I'm Kamali, taking you through some of the things people are talking about and some of the stuff they're sharing around the world on Newsfeed today. The US and one of their biggest weapons manufacturers begin a partnership to develop super soldiers. Fake news will be fought by an unlikely alliance in Nigeria. A passage to peace between India and Pakistan will tell you about the Kartapur Corridor. And pay less pranks, some punks making them pay more. Well, at the top of the newsfeed, exoskeletons, military grade ones. Now, technology that started as a way to help people unable to walk after accidents is being turned into a weapon of war. President Trump promised to make his military stronger than ever, and now there's news that they are working with one of the world's biggest arms manufacturers. The goal, to allow soldiers to stand and march and run for longer by attaching robotic skeletons to their bodies. Yep, watch this. At the beginning of this month, the world celebrated the end of World War I, a war that was supposed to end all wars. Despite that reminder, militaries around the globe seem to be forging ahead with developing the next generation of weapons. Just this week, the US Army awarded a multi-million dollar contract to Lockheed Martin to develop exoskeleton technology to turn their fighting men and women into super soldiers. Worn over a pair of pants, the exoskeleton uses a suit of sensors, artificial intelligence and other technology to aid natural movements. The idea is that we're going to take the capabilities of some of the fittest, highest performing individuals in the world, these infantry guys that you were just talking about, and we're going to extend those capabilities. We're going to make them stronger, we're going to make them last longer, and we're going to make them go faster and farther. We're going to take them that extra mile. Microsoft was awarded a nearly $500 million contract to provide its augmented reality headsets to the U.S. Army. It's not exactly clear how the 100,000 headsets will be used, but the government description of the program stated it is intended to increase lethality by enhancing the ability to detect, decide and engage before the enemy. And it's not only the U.S. Earlier this year, Russia deployed its Urine 9 robot tank in Syria, a fully armed weapon with no space for humans. And China's military drone industry, already one of the world's largest, is pushing ahead with swarm drone technology. All of this has the UN worried. The impacts of new technologies on warfare are a direct threat to our common responsibility to guarantee peace and security. The weaponization of artificial intelligence is a growing concern. Well, Professor Toby Walsh has written extensively on AI and future weaponry. He's part of a movement of academics and experts and politicians working at an international level to get the most egregious of those weapons banned. Well, we should be concerned about how technology gets used to make warfare a more terrible thing. And we are seeing an arms race to use AI and robotics to, to make warfare a much more terrible thing. And eventually it will look like those Hollywood movies if we're not careful. These are the sorts of weapons that will turn up in uh, the black markets of the world, that will fall into the hands of terrorists and rogue states. They'll be much cheaper, much more accessible than nuclear weapons. And that will really upset the geopolitical order, which is not itself very stable yet. If we do manufacture and arms companies do sell them, they will become the Kalashnikovs of the future and they will fall into the hands of people who have no qualms turning them upon, upon us. And we have to realize that at the end of the day, we will be on the receiving end of, of, of these weapons. Um, and they are the perfect weapons for terrorists. They will uh, execute any order, however terrible, however evil, uh, and they will uh, be very difficult to attribute. We've already had a case of a drone attack on uh, a Russian base in Syria where we don't know who exactly was behind it. The, we could try and regulate these technologies, just like we've regulated uh, chemical weapons, biological weapons, blinding lasers, cluster munitions. There are a number of technologies that we did come together as a world and decide it was morally repugnant to use them to fight war, and we should actually ban them. And that has been largely successful. Of course, chemical weapons still occasionally get used, but nevertheless, I think we'll be in a much more terrible world 
if chemical weapons were sold and manufactured by arms companies and were widely available. I'm still slightly hopeful that we will ban autonomous weapons before they become widely available. But I'm pretty confident that once they do become widely available, we will recoil at the terror because it will look like those Hollywood movies and the world will turn against them and then we'll ban them. It will just be a little harder, just as we discovered with nuclear weapons, that once they're out there, it's, it's, it's more difficult to close the Pandora's box. Well, elections will be held in Nigeria in three months and Africa's most populated country has to deal with the effect fake news may have on the result. So a group of competing newsrooms have come up with a decent idea. Philip's in Abuja and he'll explain. An anti-fake news website called Crosscheck Nigeria has been created by a network of journalists across the country. The platform will allow news professionals to carry out proper investigations and verification of news information before publication. Nigeria is currently experiencing a widespread circulation of false news targeted at misinforming the public by news articles, pictures and videos posted mostly on social media. The project's leading partners, including International Center for Investigative Reporting, ICIR, are hoping that the platform will curb the excesses of rumor mongers, politicians and their supporters during the forthcoming elections and beyond. And also, the general public will be allowed to post contents to the website. This will go through a verification process by at least five top fact-checkers from various news outfits before dissemination. This initiative is set up to contribute to Nigeria's quest to having a free and fair election in next year's polls. The hope is that web the website Crosscheck Nigeria will survive a number of challenges against hackers, government interference, as well as gain trust among its prospective users. Okay, let's take a look at some of the other things that caught our eye on social media. Now this is great. A baller called Steph Curry got a letter from a nine-year-old girl called Riley Morrison. Now she wanted to know why his Curry Fives weren't sold in the girl section of the Under Armour website. And he wrote back saying basically the brand had got it wrong and they put the kid sizes all in the boys section, but that was going to change. He was also gonna send her a pair and a pair of the Curry Sixes as soon as they come out. And yet both Riley and Steph wrote letters as you can see, but they both took pictures of the letters and put them on Insta and it went viral. Sorry, post office. And this footage has been watched loads of times. It shows some crooks trying and failing to rob a jewelry store in Ontario. And they were fought off by the staff who were using swords. Swords, it's madness. I thought Canada was chill. An initiative that some people are seeing as a step toward a lasting peace between India and Pakistan is about to begin. Here's Shristri. It's one of the world's most dangerous borders, but a section of it will be opening up soon, all thanks to the Kartarpur Corridor. It's seen as a step towards improving people-to-people -people relations between the two neighbours. But what is the Kartarpur Corridor? The partition in 1947 ripped the state of Punjab and the Sikh community into two. And ever since then, the Sikhs have wanted an easy access to the shrines across the border. Now, this project will connect two Gurudwaras or the Sikh shrines, the Dera Baba Nanak Sahib in India and the Kartarpur Sahib in Pakistan. The latter marks the final resting place for Guru Nanak, the founder of Sikhism. This makes the shrine significant to the community. The corridor, which is a few kilometers long, will provide easy access to the Kartarpur Sahib. Until now, many devotees even used binoculars to view the shrine across the border. But this agreement has been a long time in the making. Sikh pilgrims had been demanding a corridor for decades and it was first proposed in 1999 when the then Indian Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee took a bus ride to Lahore in Pakistan. Although many politicians on either side made promises, nothing materialised for years. In 2018, the corridor came up for discussion during Imran Khan's oath-taking ceremony. Since then, media reports emerged saying that Pakistan was considering opening up the corridor for the 550th birth anniversary of Guru Nanak in 2019. In November 2018, India approved development of the corridor and Pakistan immediately responded saying it had already decided to open it up. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi even compared it to the fall of the Berlin Wall. <laughs> शायद 
गुरु नानक देव जी का आशीर्वाद से करतारपुर का कॉरिडोर ये सिर्फ कॉरिडोर नहीं है जन जन को जोड़ने का एक बहुत बड़ा कारण बन सकता है पाकिस्तान प्राइम मिनिस्टर इमरान खान ऑल्सो प्रेस द मूव वाइल इनोग्रेटिंग द कॉरिडोर अगर फ्रांस और जर्मनी एक यूनियन बना के आगे बढ़ सकते हैं हम क्यों नहीं बढ़ सकते वाइल मैनी आर कॉलिंग दिस द विक्ट्री ऑफ पीस सम से द मूव इज सेंडिंग आउट मिक्स सिग्नल्स देर हैज बिन अ कॉन्ट्रोवर्सी ओवर हु शुड बी क्रेडिटेड फॉर द पैसेज बट डिस्पाइट द चैलेंजेस विल द करतारपुर कॉरिडोर ओपन अप अ ब्रिज बिटवीन द टू राइवल नेशंस take you around the world now for some other stories you need to know this Friday. Now the home of average coffee Starbucks is banning people from using the Wi-Fi in their stores to access pornography. Yes, apparently people do that. The block begins in the US in 2018. Amazingly, only 27,000 people voted for the ban. The billionaire Richard Branson says he will give 3 million dollars to anyone who can create a better air conditioner. It's part of something called the Global Cooling Prize. Now air conditioning is a massive drain on resources and one of the main uses of electricity generated from burning fossil fuels, therefore contributing to the adversely affected climate. NASA say that Elon Musk will not be smoking cannabis or drinking in public if they have anything to do with it. The boss of SpaceX famously smoked on a podcast a few months back. Now in the time since he's lost control of his car company Tesla and many have questioned his ability to run his other firms. Now NASA can have a say in what Musk does as SpaceX is a NASA contractor and they say they don't want anyone employed by by them engaging in what they call questionable behavior. It's only one way to stop me, but you're not going to do it. Are you sure about that? Daredevil on Netflix is coming to an end after its third season. Daredevil is a Marvel character and Marvel are owned by Disney and Disney are about to launch their own streaming service. You have to see the wizards, the wonderful wizard of Oz. You find the ends of wizard of Oz. And a computer has made a call on the most influential film of all time and it's a big bold call. The algorithm from the University of Turin went with The Wizard of Oz. I told you it was bold. Second was Star Wars, third was Psycho. And the computer ranked films not on their critical acclaim or box office sales, but on how many times they are referenced in other films and how many spin-offs they spawned. They also looked at the most influential actors which were in order Samuel L. Jackson, Clint Eastwood and Tom Cruise. It's a really detailed study and you can read the whole thing at the website Applied Science Network. Link will be in the show notes. And there are a few groups of people I enjoy seeing pranked and exposed for the insincere individuals they are than Instagram influencers. You know the types who exist in that weird space between human advert and acting. Well, Paler Shoes got one over on a bunch of them in LA and it was priceless. How much would you pay for a pair of these? When you hear the words Payless shoes, high-end fashion doesn't usually come to mind. But for one night in LA, it did. Sort of. The company known for selling cheap footwear pulled the prank of a lifetime. They opened a luxury shoe store called Palessi and filled it with their footwear, which would normally retail between $20 to $40. Instagram influencers were invited to the 2-day grand opening. and they sure did empty their wallets all right. I would definitely spend 295 on a pump like this. I would pay 400, 500. Yeah. People are going to be like, oh, "Where'd you get those? Those are amazing." And then they were told the truth. These are actually from Payless. Shut up. The company made $3,000 worth of sales in just 3 hours. Buyers got their money back and kept the shoes for their trouble. But the prank was multi-layered. There was a sleek website and an Instagram account created for the brand. Those behind the campaign told Adweek that the marketing stunt was designed to prove footwear could be cheap and trendy at the same time. Payless has been a struggling business for several years now. It even filed for bankruptcy in 2017. So would you pay more? Oh, Payless. So influencers don't know what they're talking about. I'm shocked. Well, that's all from the news feed team. Reach out to me with your questions, comments, complaints, and suggestions. I'm at Kamali Melbourne. You'll find us 24/7 on Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook. Follow, subscribe, and add. See you again soon. <laughs>